Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to set up our L200M Nile kiln. Uh, we are standing in a homemade chamber. Uh, one thing I want to start with is loading this chamber. It's really crucial to make sure that you guys are trying to maximize filling this chamber with wood. It will always run better the more full it is. Uh, so the depth of your units is 42 inch and you're going to do two units side by side and always keeping a 10 inch gap between this unit here and your lumber. Um, if you cannot get your lumber to fill all the way to the end of our chamber, we're always going to shove uh, seed bags or tarps to try and plug that open air gap on the end of the lumber units to force airflow through uh, the lumber units. And when we come over here to the uh, Nile uh, dehumidifier and heater unit here, you will notice that we have some sensors over here. We have our dry bulb temperature gauge. We have our wet bulb temperature gauge. And the one thing you're going to do every single kiln cycle is take this wet bulb wick and you're going to trim about two inches off of it to get the crusty old wick off and fill it. Make sure this thing is completely full of water. So we just filled it, but just, you know, for example purposes, there you go. Always make sure this thing is topped off for every kiln cycle. Longer cycles, you may have to refill it after two weeks. And then get that wick back on the probe. Next thing I want to do is check and make sure the way that we get rid of our condensate water. I have it coming out of a PVC tube. Make sure this thing is clear of debris, which it's good. And I'll double check that the pump works. And this pump transfers the water into a bigger tank. So I can see that that's discharging the water. And I hear it running, so that is good to go. And then the next thing I want to show you guys is your moisture probes. So there's up to four of these sets of probes you can put in the lumber units. Um, I am always going to uh, do at least two probes usually I'm going to use, and it's a 10 millimeter socket. You have several different size screws for different thickness of lumber that you're using. Uh, I'm using these really short ones just to show you guys how I place them in the wood. I'm usually going to try and locate a lower grade section of lumber. So that would be somewhere near like a knot or a tighter grain. And I'm usually going to try and insert these about one inch on center. So from the center of this screw to the next one should be about an inch apart. And you'll notice the gap, I wanna keep under like a quarter inch gap between the actual heads of those. Uh, and then these probes, you'll notice they're slit. There's like four little sections of it. I always wanna like, spread these out a little to make sure I'm spanning the metal. I'm just using a little feeler gauge here to make sure that they go into these screws nice and snugly and don't rattle out during the unit or during the cycle. So that's how I do that. Next step, I just want to show you guys on this unit, there is an overload protection switch inside of here. If the unit ever runs over temperature, it'll set off this switch and turn off the dehumidifier compressor. Um, and I'm going to show you where it is because it is pretty important. All right. So right here, you'll see above the compressor, there is a little green guy there with an orange tip. And that is this button. If the thing has turn the compressor off, this button will click to turn it back on. And that's it. Um, now I just want to show you guys how I set up the computer for our basic drying cycle, which is usually to dry reclaimed beams.
All right, so before I begin, the most important uh, educational resource is the Nile Operations Manual. This is going to tell you guys all the different settings for different types of wood that you're drying. I'm going to keep it simple and just show you how I set this thing up to dry beams. First thing I'm going to do is turn on the computer, turn on the fans, and let this thing load. You'll notice there's rocker switches here for different um, components. So our compressor, that's our dehumidifier. We want to make sure that's on. Heater on. This humidifier we do not use. That's for if you have misters, which we do not have. The over temperature vent, you definitely want that on. So now to actually start programming the settings, you're going to press select. And the first thing it's going to do is have you go through and turn your probes on or off. So right now they're all turned on to the correct setting. Probe two is what we want on. If you want to turn it off, you just toggle the arrow. And then keep pressing select to go through all four probe settings. Now you're going to get to dry bulb. For beams, our reclaim beams, we're going to start at 140 degree dry bulb. And we're going to set our wet bulb at 80. Now this setting we're going to run for at least a week. So now we have this set. Our probe is reading 4% moisture, which is way below normal, but that piece of wood that we put probes in was already dry. Your beams are mostly going to be around 20% moisture. And you're going to want to keep this thing running until that moisture content gets around 8 or 10% moisture coming from your probes, which that's what those numbers mean. Um, when you do finally get it down to that moisture level you want, 8 or 10%, which is going to take about a week at this setting, we're going to now uh, set pitch and sterilize. So we're going to, first thing, most important, turning the compressor off because we are now going to go over 140 degrees which will set the overload switch on the compressor if you do not turn it off. So we're gonna cycle through, get to our dry bulb, and turn the dry bulb to 160. And remember, we're only doing this after we've fully dried the wood. And then keeping that wet bulb at 80 is fine. Now, as as soon as the temperature reading gets to 160 degrees, I usually want to run it at 160 degrees for two or three full days to set pitch and sterilize the wood. Um, if you guys are doing other type of lumber, other thickness of lumber, I'm going to use the drying schedule in the manual to help me set my dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. So it is going to guide you, you know, if you're starting with really wet wood, you know, depending on the species, you're going to start your dry bulb really low at 90 degrees and your wet bulb really close to that. And slowly, incrementally work your way up as the wood is drying. Um, and usually finishing your cycle off at 140 degrees for like hardwoods. But when we're doing beams, we basically just want to, we want to scorch them to sterilize them and get them really hot to set pitch in the wood. Um, that's what we do for our beams. Like I say, follow the manual if you guys are doing any other type of wood. Um, and that is basic setup for the Nile kiln. Obviously, when you're done, make sure you turn the unit off and turn your fans off before entering the kiln to start unloading your wood. And make sure you unscrew those probe screws and pull your probes out before you unload the wood. Have a great day, everyone, and thanks for watching.